Hello everyone and welcome to Shonen Archive. I'm Woking, I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump anime, currently only on Gentleman because of how busy I am with work. Oh my god, we want to go back to Gintama someday, I swear. One of these days. We're gonna. We will. we will. Oh my god, we will straight. To be fair, we've had the, the worst string of luck trying to record. <laughs> It's been, yeah, it's been a shit. Life is kicking asses and not listening. No, not at all. But thankfully, the series we are talking about this week is Chainsaw Man. Funny enough, if we had actually planned this out, we could have also probably talked about uh, JoJo, but I feel like JoJo would take a much longer... Get the, obviously, we need to go in actual order. We can't just start with six. <laughs> I realized this was like, oh yeah, we both were probably just both independently watching Stone Ocean. <laughs> we could we talk were, about. Yeah, I haven't watched the new ones yet, though. I have to see it, but uh, at the same time, we obviously have to do the due diligence and actually start with part one and go all the way up to the other parts, as most people should with JoJo. <laughs> is that you have mm-hmm. to start with number one? But anyway, we're here to talk about Chainsaw Man episodes seven and eight. Yeah, get hype, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'm saying this now before I forget. At the end of it, remember to always leave a <laughs> like because it helps a whole bunch. Thankfully, Fago carries my channel hardcore, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But it does help out the channel <laughs> and help Grove. <laughs> but don't worry about it because at any given point, I'll just release a Fago video and my like my metrics go up by like 5,000%. So it helps us make shows <laughs> like this possible. Perfect. Funded by FGO. <laughs> Finally, something good coming out of FGO. <laughs> Just kidding, I love the game. Go support those videos too. Anyways, then, tell us about episode 7, Chainsaw Man, which I should look up the title real quick. I still have it on uh, a, The Taste of a Kiss. Oh, yeah. The Taste of a Kiss. <laughs> the episode everyone's uh-huh. been waiting to not <laughs> ruin so people could... <laughs> So, uh, we pick up where we left off last time. Denji lands uh, inside the Eternity Devil. He gets eaten by it, pulls his ripcord, becomes Chainsaw Man. Um, He's trying to do enough damage to the Eternity Devil to make it suicidal. Because his heart is not there, so he's not actually, uh, like, a risk. So, he's trying to uh, basically make it want to give up, because it can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um... Denji gets really damaged, and his chainsaw starts to retract. But then he uh, bites uh, the Eternity Devil, drinks its blood, and realizes that he can subs- like sustain himself that way. So Denji's fighting the Eternity Devil like crazy, and Himeno kind of has a little flashback where like uh, Kishibe says that it's important that Devil Hunters be crazy, because if you're sane then you'll be afraid of them because a sane person should be, and that'll just make them stronger. Um, then it skips for a little bit, and we get like a, a time skip of several days. Uh, it's like three straight days Yeah. Uh, that Denji has been fighting the Eternity Devil, and finally the Eternity Devil just gives Denji his heart and just says, kill me for God's sake. <laughs> uh, and does. Um... They all leave, and they decide to go have a party at this little restaurant. Uh, everyone gets... Well, not everyone, but Jimeno gets shwasted while everyone else is uh, hanging out together. Jimeno ends up kissing Denji like she said that she would, and then she vomits into his mouth. And then because Denji grew up poor, he instinctively swallows anything that's in his mouth at all times. <laughs> uh, so he swallows the vomit. And then there is the next, uh, the the like next few moments. He's in the restroom, vomiting out the vomit. Um, so Hiro Kirakazu is trying to make him feel better, and he's like, "Oh man, you know, you're such a great devil hunter. I wish I could be like you." And then then she's like, "Dude, my very first kiss, someone threw up in my mouth. There's nothing to be. <laughs> don't, don't 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 wish yourself to be like me." Uh, and then Denji is unable to walk and so Himeno just picks him up and <laughs> takes him away uh, and they wake up in Himeno's apartment with her laying next to him saying that they should have sex 
And then we end with the ED, which is another, man, another fantastic one. This one was, was the 80s aesthetic one where it, it looked like it started off with like a JRPG of Chainsaw Man, which I felt slighted against because everyone knows in the year 2022, uh, Chainsaw Man would most likely get a gotcha and not a JRPG. But if it did Correct. come, <laughs> if it came out way back in the day, it totally would have gotten something like that. Uh, Shoutouts to all those early JRPG Dragon Ball games that we never got. Oh, man, I know. They should have come over here. I know, so sad. But then it also goes into, like, uh, different aspect ratios, and it shows all the... Um, all the girl, all the, all the girl, all four power, all the four girls, Makama, Power, uh, Kobeni, which is really funny <laughs> to see Kobeni there, because she's the most just a girl out of all the girls, and, uh, Himeno. And then there's a full-on, just, like, 30 seconds of them dedicated of them doing, like, an 80s aesthetic throw-up as they do the, the scene, but it's all rainbow, <laughs> and they just spin around it. <laughs> Yeah, the, the 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 rainbow vomit where they spin for like way too long is really funny. It is really funny. Just letting you know that this is definitely this is a moment. This is everyone knew that this was coming, except for the people who were anime only, who were just like, "Oh my god, this is terrible." Ah, uh, so Zen, what did you think about this episode? Fantastic episode. I really loved the fight in the beginning. I really like that fight when Denji's in just like an insane chainsaw man mode. Yeah, and then they also uh, play uh, the, the like heavy metal Japanese music, like crazy guitars yeah. as he's going. <laughs> he's just like hacking this thing to pieces. Um, I like the restaurant scene because power is always funny, and power is really good in that scene when. Uh, she just takes the entire plate of fried chicken <laughs> and also she cannot eat with chopsticks so she just takes a single chopstick and stabs it into the thing that she's trying to eat yeah very good detail on that yes very she, good she also starts uh, changing her iq going from 100 to 120 to yeah, eventually she keeps improving it every time someone says it's better uh she's also great for when she realizes like, like it's it, it, she's almost like a greek chorus except for she's just here to laugh at other people so she was like that in the previous episode where she just like starts laughing at the crazy shit that's going on but here it's really funny cause she's like ah oh, i know what's gonna happen next he's gonna totally eat it yeah when she just starts laughing like ha, ah, he's totally gonna eat that <laughs> Yeah, uh, didn't, in the IQ bit, doesn't she end up at like five hundred? She does end up at five hundred after the guy says like one thirty-seven. Uh, and she's like, "Oh yeah, mine's like five hundred." Um, <laughs> yeah, love, love power for that. Um, yeah, power's fantastic. Uh-huh. And the little bits of uh, Makima in this are funny. When uh, I forget, doesn't she say something when Himeno vomits into Denji's mouth? Isn't she like, "Oh dear." <laughs> Yeah, she goes, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. It is. It's the first time that she's ever had any form of, like, a, okay, <laughs> I guess something's yeah, like happening Like a comedic now. reaction to something. <laughs> Which is really funny. Which is um, which is another thing I was actually going to talk about, that this is the first one where I feel like this is the episode where some people are starting to break from the... People are getting a new. <laughs> well, this always happens where anime uh, onlys and the manga people start to get annoyed with each other since there was a lot of people saying, like, oh, Makamo was clearly jealous during a certain bit. And then I think everyone else is like, she doesn't really. She doesn't really get jealous. I would say, actually, the first time you see her emotion is her going, oh no. <laughs> like, going, oh dear. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. Someone just vomited in someone else's mouth. Yeah, up until then, I thought she was just pure. Same as always. Cool, cool calm, collected. <laughs> uh, any other moments? Uh, I like when everyone's introducing themselves. I also think it was funny that uh, Kobeni got lost, because I don't know why it's just <laughs> funny when bad things happen to Kobeni. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually like the. There's a. <laughs> for being the most normal plain girl, there's a weird air of mystery to Kobeni. Like, one, she gets lost, which is really fun. She also shows up with a hat, which she did not have in the manga. Yeah, and then obviously she doesn't reveal uh, her devil when everyone else does. Mm-hmm. Which almost makes me feel like this long bit, because uh, I'm pretty sure she actually doesn't have one. I feel like that's that the... That would re- be funny. Yeah, if she just straight up didn't have one, that yeah. would be really funny. 
she seems too scared to actually make a pact with a devil, and I feel like that's the reason why she doesn't say anything, is that she doesn't have one, and she's never had one, <laughs> and she that just doesn't want to say. <laughs> that's my theory, anyway. We'll see if it ever if we ever figure it out. <laughs> but yeah, that stuff was really. Good. I also like like the reveal where he's like, "Oh yeah, this is a hand me down dress. I have eight sisters," and it's like, "What? Wait, wait, go back." <laughs> Why does she have eight sisters? <laughs> like, everything about Covetti's life, like, what we learned last day is, like, it was either get this job or become a prostitute. Like, everything about her life is extremely bizarre for being just a very average, normal girl. <laughs> <laughs> So that was uh, good stuff there. Also, learning a little bit more about uh, Fox Devil, too, about how Fox Devil just, like, makes a whole bunch of packs with only dudes. <laughs> Yeah, Fox Devil's just like a devil hoe. Yeah, exactly. Like, and then it's like, isn't it that only uh, the more attractive ones get like the better abilities? Yeah, only the attractive ones get her face. <laughs> she's. I think they actually said in the translation she's really down bad for pretty boys. Yeah, that's what they say. Isn't that what Jimena says? Yeah, she does, which is funny. I was like, yeah, that would be the accurate uh, representation of this. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that that scene was great. This was a very uh, fun episode. Actually, this episode, which is funny because in the manga, this is the part where I realized, man, I really love Chainsaw Man. Because this is the when she th- when Himeno throws up in Denji's mouth, that was when I was like, I have no fucking idea what's ever going to happen in this manga. And I kind of like it. Like... I, it's hard, well, obviously the people who only see anime understand, that shit just didn't come up, but when you're reading it, you're like going, oh yeah, things are going, and then you go like, what the fuck, and it's also uncensored in the manga, which is also really funny that it's censored here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's got the censor, like, mosaic effect over it. It's like, that's taking it too <laughs> step forward. We can show him, like, literally bathing in blood and, like, eating a devil, but we can't show him eating barf. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is the part in the manga where I was just like fully in. I'm like, God damn it. I never know what's going to happen in this. It's so gross and I love it so much. Fucking love Chainsaw Man. It's so good. Yeah, it is. Um, when he's fighting, this is also a pretty good detail because, um, I remember it was a slow realization in the manga, but the anime is helping me a whole bunch with them constantly bringing up how devils are kind of like driven by fear and that's how they get more powerful that when denji reveals his form um kobeni and the other guy are just completely terrified of what he's doing like the entire time he's fighting they're just 100 percent scared and it kind of shows the like maybe a slow transition into denji being seen as like human for the most part you know they don't say, but the second he releases the chainsaw man, they're like, "I actually have no idea what this guy is," and I'm just kind of <laughs> yeah. Sc- everyone's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, it's like I'm just ki- I'm just in general scared, and it makes it his devil side of him come out a lot more. And I think it's actually kind of a nice build up to it, where it's like, yeah, it it is a little. <laughs> he really does go out of hand when he goes into the chainsaw man form and he feels more devilish than he does human. And especially with the way he acts and the way he eats, it's actually kind of hard to remember that Denji is actually supposed to be human. (laughs) Uh, so I liked seeing that stuff and especially how scared they were. And obviously the, the, the music was also fantastic. The heavy metal starts when he's just like, going, and then when he's, um, fighting he's like oh man i just realized i'm a perpetual fucking motion machine (laughs) yeah that was so funny when he calls himself a fucking perpetual motion machine so funny i was like wait how the fuck does he even know what that is but just the fact that he knows what it is is funny enough he's going at it um drowned in blood and then when the guy reveals his heart he's like what that all you got all right, fine. And then when they actually leave the <laughs> the hotel, it's really funny because it, you can tell that they're fucking tired of shit and nothing has changed since they <laughs> went yeah, in. it's exactly the same. Except for now, everyone is extremely tired. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the team kind of hanging out with each other, drinking, getting to know each other a little bit more. Uh, Makuma actually gets to show up, and it's really funny because when she comes in it's like i've never there's people who are like i've never actually seen her before i didn't know like my god it's her 
like yeah holy shit like even they treated like holy shit it's 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 her <laughs> it's the girl but it was fun seeing him hang out it was fun seeing her out drink everyone aki trying to get some info out of her because he feels like she's holding something back and she said i'll reveal to you if you can out drink me and no one comes close like they're passed out and she's still perfectly okay um himeno was great power was great Everyone was great. Great time. And then I like the end uh, stuff as well, where it looks like... Which is really funny, because I was like, oh yeah, I completely forgot the age difference. <laughs> if they did not bring... I, I, that's something I kind of always forget about. Um, which is really funny. I, so you would probably know a little bit more, because you follow a little bit more of the other scenes there. Does Himeno get as much crap for her what she does here as makuma does for her clear grooming no okay so this is totally a flirting versus harassment situation isn't it yes <laughs> <laughs> yes okay as long as we're all on the same agreement here <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really I can't explain it <laughs> I really do like her character even for what I'm not so let's just leave it at that We'll talk about it yeah, more. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Is that, like, she's likable, but also Jesus. Yeah, she is very likable, and I feel like there's a certain level of, and we can get into it more, of, like, there's a, like, a, almost like a devil may care of trying to live life as much as she can in the very limited time. Like, she knows for a fact that just doing what she does, she does not have that much time left to live, which is why when everyone else is like, oh, yeah, Kobeni and the other guy, they want to quit and apologize and he's like well you did that are you gonna be doing and she's like i know they're so fucking they're like millennials she was like two steps away from going like i can't believe this generation <laughs> so <laughs> soft uh it, it definitely feels like she knows that there's probably not that much time so it's better just to kind of live life if you fuck up then you fuck up and that's it it's not like i'm gonna be living very much longer i fight devils for a living <laughs> So I think that probably helps a little bit compared to Makama, who doesn't really feel like that. But we'll get more of that and talk more about that in the next episode. Because next we got episode 8, which the last cliffhanger we left on was potentially, is there going to be sex? Zen, was there sex? Tell us. Please. There was not. Boo! There the, was not the name of this episode was not called sex. It was called gunfire, which is a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not great. Uh, so... No, there was, in fact, no plowing. Um, <laughs> Denji flashes back a bit to when he's outside of the bar and he's complaining that his first kiss is going to feel like vomit. Uh, and Maki is, like, eating a lollipop and she puts it in his mouth. And then she's like, well, your first indirect kiss is going to taste like lollipop. Uh, and then we cut back to the next morning where Himeno and Denji are eating. Uh, she asks if they did anything while she was drunk, and he said no, and she says, thank God, because I could have gone to jail. <laughs> uh, she's right, you know? <laughs> yeah, she's right. Always and important. they uh, make an agreement that Jimeno will help him get Makima to fall in love with him if he helps her get Aki to fall in love with her, which uh, they, agree, they agree to. They make an alliance and declare themselves no longer just co-workers, but also friends. And then uh, we cut to Makima on the train, and she says she doesn't really care about going to some kind of lunch meeting. And then they get jumped and shot dead by assassins on the train. And there's some sort of big attack being carried out on the various other members of the Devil Hunters. Uh, a man at the ramen shop that Himeno, Power, Aki, and Denji are in starts talking to them. Um, then he pulls a gun out and shoots Denji in the head and attacks the others. He hits Himeno, but not Power or Aki, I believe. Yeah, it doesn't hit either of them. Yeah. And then uh, Aki eats the man with the Fox Devil, but he escapes and reveals that he is Katana Man. He is basically Chainsaw Man, but with Katana Blades instead. Um... Aki finally draws his sword and reveals that it's actually a nail. It is not like a sword sword. Um, they fight a few times. And then 
Aki pierces him enough times with the nail to have the cursed devil kill him. Um, Aki is curious how there are guns, and he says they need to get him into a hospital. But then um, another enemy appears and revives the katana man, who then takes out Aki in one hit. Power says that she's unable to help Aki because Katana Man is too fast. And so Himeno uh, sacrifices herself to the Ghost Devil to fully incarnate it. The way that she uh, gave up her eye to be able to incarnate its hand. She gives up her whole body to incarnate the whole thing. Uh, she has a little moment where she says that Aki isn't allowed to die because Aki needs to live so that someone can cry for her when she dies. And then the uh, mysterious woman calls out the snake devil, which defeats the ghost devil. And we get a reveal that uh, Jimeno has vanished because she sacrificed her body to the ghost devil. And it ends there. Mm -hmm. And then the ED for this one is basically like a Jimeno focused one that ends with like them putting like it's it shows like the transition from Jimeno being the one at the grave sites to now it's Aki only and then he leaves flowers for her, which I thought was very nice, very nice way of saying it. Very depressing. <laughs> so thank you for uh -huh. that, Jade's all bad. Extremely, in fact. Yeah, and this is the first hint of what everyone uh. This is the first taste of the Chainsaw Man pacing. <laughs> this is the first yes. time where you go, holy shit, <laughs> shit's just kind of happening out of nowhere. And then a pace, oh man, I was so happy to see this again. I love the Chainsaw Man pacing jokes, because they're really funny and they're very accurate. They're you, all funny, yeah. They're all funny. They're all funny. It's like... It's 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 a it's a joke specific of like you have to have been reading Chainsaw Man like it's a little bit it's actually no it's still crazy fast in the anime but when you're reading the manga and especially in one go <laughs> shit can kind of feel like it's plopping off it is the craziest 100 chapters and the shit that happens in that 100 chapters is done at such a crazy pace that you could only call it the Chainsaw Man pacing so it was nice to see it here I remember when this happened in the manga and I was going what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on yeah it, it literally was like oh everyone's kind of we're wrapping this up we're going to the next thing oh my god <laughs> like oh, everyone's just getting attacked everyone, everyone is dead no every it, it, like makuma gets shot in the fucking head <laughs> first thing and the way they shoot her here is also really good because they don't like you can feel like the music building up and you feel like it's gonna build up to a fight and then you just hear pow pow <laughs> and she's gone <laughs> yep <laughs> And then they cut around to the others, and they show Kobeni and the other guy, and um, they're helping out an old man, and then it seems pretty clear that he, the old man takes out a gun. Like, everyone's taking out a gun. All the people who are at that restaurant have been basic. their fate hasn't been shown yet, but based off of the fact that they've been shot by a gun and they're very illegal. Like, it almost shows, like, the effect of, like, when you're so used to guns not being, le uh, the guns being so heavily, like, under scrutiny. Like, the idea of someone just having a gun and shooting you is so foreign that you don't even s think about it. So the fact that all of them got taken out, it would be the ultimate surprise. Like, even dudes who work in the government, and in theory you would think, oh, they would be afraid of this. Like, it could pop off at any time. No, dudes are usually coming at you with, like, fucking katanas or a devil thing. They don't actually show up with a gun and just shoot you, which is much easier to do. Oh, wait, yeah, one it's moment. pretty wild. Uh, it, the whole thing with, like... Chainsaw Man's overall uh, insane fucking... I don't even really know how to describe it. It really is just Chainsaw Man pacing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... Uh, like, that just is what it is, to be honest. Yep, it's an extremely just accurate description of what it is. <laughs> it's something that you have to just see it for yourself and experience it, and it's something else seeing it in animated form. Uh, in terms of the episode here... Um, man, I really like the beginning stuff because it seems pretty clear that she was about to totally bang this child. Well, 16-year-old boy. Still a boy. 16-year-old boy, and the only thing that stopped it was that he had a <laughs> used-up lollipop in his pants. Yep. 
And I also thought it was kind of sweet, because this is probably the sweetest thing, the, the as sweet as Denji can be, where he's just like, even when drunk, he's like, no, it has to be her. So it has to be, he, it shows that he has some form of caring, even though Denji is a weird, uh, degenerate a lot of the times. It seems like he's still, he, <laughs> thankfully, almost all, av- the time, yeah. almost all the time, he does seem like he does genuinely care, and this specific moment, he wants it to be with her, which is nice, um... Very cute if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, obvious age difference. But whatever. It's still, I think, <laughs> cute in the fact that he's an idiot. So. Yeah, he's just like a little dumbass. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's almost, it, uh, if <laughs> if it wasn't so vulgar, if you just, if you just literally remove the sex part and you just put it as like a longing thing, that's just basically your chaste hero going like, ah, oh, I really do love them. It's just the fact that Genji is one of those and also an extreme degenerate. <laughs> That makes it funny and makes his character the way it is. But he also, like, curls up to the lollipop, too, which is funny. He's just like, ah, yes, I care so much about this. I actually like when Makama tells him about, um, like, (laughs) it's the most sincere conversation about, because he asks, like, genuinely, is my first kiss just gonna, is, like, am I always just gonna remember the vomit? Is that the only? Is that all life is now? Is that whenever I think of a kiss, I remember vomit mouth? And she goes like, "No, you won't. You like, there's other things you'll experience. You're young, and you know, there's other things to worry. Like, there's other things in your life that you'll both enjoy, and I guess also um, not enjoy that you'll forget all about the vomit kiss. So you're fine." And then she gives him the lollipop, and that's your first indirect kiss. I thought that was nice. It's like the nicest she's been to him. That. If you don't count, like, the innuendos of I will have sex with you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the nicest she's been to him that doesn't feel explicitly manipulative. Even though it is. Yeah, but it, it is. But it doesn't feel as as in-your-face manipulative. No. It feels like someone genuinely just, like, trying to be like, Listen, man, you got a real bum rap on this. I saw that. I was surprised by it. I was shook by it, but... <laughs> You'll, you're young, you'll be fine. You'll have other experiences, don't worry about it. Which I thought was very nice. Um, I like how his response when she's like, uh, oh yeah, I could have gone to jail for that. He's like, like, I would ever do vomit mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's like, did, did we have sex? And he's like, no, you fucking vomited in my mouth. <laughs> Puke mouth. <laughs> And she goes, like, uh, not many people would be able to eat after a situation like that. He's like, who the hell says no to free food? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, confused. He's like, well, every other normal people would have left by now. And he's like, what the fuck? Why? This food is free. <laughs> food free. Uh, <clears throat> they end up, funny enough, do seem to be very similar in that they both seem to be dudes who are just degenerate in their own specific ways. Himeno being very much carefree, doesn't give a fuck about life. Cares about life, but at the same time just kind of like rolls with it and just like, ah, you know, I brought over the 16-year-old. I was very drunk. I almost made a grave mistake that would have put me in jail for like, who knows, (laughs) a couple years. But, you know, it didn't happen. We're here eating a meal. (laughs) Look at us. (laughs) Do you think... Is it life strange? Let's form an alliance. I help her fall in love with you. You help me fall in love with Aki. Let's do it. Good, uh, good pal friend. And he's like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's go. And I really did uh, like uh, Jimena, which is very sad to see her go um, at the end. The way she goes out. She also goes out in a very uh, sad way where you kind of just see the kind of mindset she has of her. And I think every time we've ever seen her at the graveyard she isn't crying which i think is why she likes aki so much is that she mentions it as she's fighting it is that she used to think that it was like funny that he would cry about losing the recruits like he would go to a private and he would cry because he cared that much about it and over time she realized like no i actually that's good like whatever happened in her job that made her the way she is like whatever situation she's gone through um to have someone that legitimately cares about you and would cry for you if you died she just couldn't imagine someone like that existing and so the fact that she found someone and she was able to do what she could never do which is care enough about the people she worked with to actually cry when she when they died 
um, it was someone worth protecting and giving your life for, and if only for the fact that he should live, because it means that there's going to be someone to actually care about her, is very touching, and it's very funny that this character has this moment in the same episode where she talks about not going, ha- being happy, not going to jail because she didn't have sex with a 16-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's some total whiplash in there, for sure. For 100% sure, but... I love that about it, and I think it makes it feel a little bit more human because, again, I think there's a certain part of people, and you can choose to see how many, how much of it is, that people in general do fuck up a whole bunch and are, in their core essence, fuck-ups. But in this case, she's a fuck-up who understands that there's still things that matter in the world, and she's happy to find someone to remind her what actually does matter in the world, and that person is worth dying for and protecting for, even if she... Even if she, through her normal life, was a complete scumbag of some kind, um, she still sees the value in people who are better than her and that they should, in fact, be kept alive. Because finding someone who cares that much about people, even after all the things, has never gone numb about no matter what he's experienced. And he's gone through some shit things in his life that he still cares enough about people to find time to find solace to himself completely away from everyone else and just kind of like mourn the death of these people. Because it feels like more and more in this world that there isn't really people like that anymore. You know, I think it's very touching. It's very well done. And yeah. Great moment yeah, in Chainsaw really Man. The, the end where he looks over and sees just her clothes laying on the floor is very sad. Mm. Um, the, whole, the whole fight between Aki and Katana Man is really good. Um, oh yeah, wouldn't... I kind of like how it it's set up in the very beginning of this episode. Like, oh, Denji's you know, Chainsaw Man's like, oh, this is fucking unstoppable. Look at this guy, and then they immediately take him out of the action in this one because you mm-hmm. know when he was fighting the Infinity Devil here, or the Eternity Devil, he was like fucking untouchable. Um, and then they very quickly kind of remove him from the fray in this one, uh, which I like a lot because. It kind of like it gives you that extra sense of dread, where like, oh fuck, the guy who's usually the ace in the hole that would win in this situation is not here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it really makes the fight itself more stressful. Uh, really fucking good. Yeah, really and good episode. The, mm-hmm. And the added brilliance of showing Makima die first, and then at that point you don't know what happens anymore. At that point, all limits are basically gone. <laughs> so not only is she gone, Denji's out. You don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> you, you don't know if you, is it. I don't know how much longer these characters have, to be honest with you. Because all, th- all the things I thought were like the basic logic of like, oh, you know, obviously a hero and his usual compatriots don't die until it's time to actually fight. Like, for example, Gun Devil. You would expect that that would be the thing of like, oh, when everyone's off to go fight Gun Devil, that's when it's going to happen. But no, in this case, it's like literally some dudes just showed up and fucking shot them. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Just some random people just showed up and shot all of them. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It actually reminds me a lot of uh, a very short comic story, which I think was included in one of the Batman. It might have been included in Batman Arkham Asylum. I don't remember at this point. But it was a very short story by a writer of Batman, and they always said, like, <clears throat> it, was a very sh- it was a very funny comic where he's like, I never fully understood the villains of Batman. So here's how I would specifically take out Batman. And like, I wouldn't be like Joker. I wouldn't have a giant plot. I wouldn't have like a silly balloon filled with acid or something. I wouldn't be penguin. I wouldn't have like a whole bunch of like city wide takeover. What would happen is that one day Batman would just be stopping crime and he'd be on a day where he was just like happy with himself. And he was just like, staring back and thinking about like man i really am making a difference and then bang shot him right in the head and that's how (laughs) i take out batman he's like i would wait until the moment where he was most happy and proud of himself bang that's all you need (laughs) you don't need the crazy pie you don't need you don't need all this pomp and circumstance if you want to take him out you just take him out and that's what i think about any time of situation like this comes out where it's like yeah, this is the best way of kind of doing it. It's like you don't expect this shit to happen at all. So, 
continuing to be well done. Some great stuff going on. I also like that they don't show a next episode preview on for Chainsaw Man. Uh, because they spend so much time on the new EDs, and they just kind of ended on that, so there's no actual next episode, so you just actually don't know what happens next. Yep, you have no fucking idea. That's very nice. I can kind of... I've always been a big fan of, uh, the next time episode things, I think, especially if they're well done. Like, I always talk back about that one, My Hero one, where Shiggy takes over the My Hero ones after Deku's been doing them, and (laughs) I always really like it when they, like, play around with stuff like that. <clears throat> but it's actually very nice in this specific story because so much of Chainsaw Man is like not knowing what happens next. So I think they've done a smart job of just like letting it just end, and you know speaks for itself. Uh, anything else you want to say about this episode, son? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, a really good cliffhanger. Fucking super excited for the the following episode. It's gonna mm. be a damn good fight. Yeah, yeah. I also like that we live in a world of Chainsaw Man where a man shows up with a katana in his head and you just go, oh yeah, the, he's a katana man. We're all good here. <laughs> oh yeah, the katana man. <laughs> yeah, katana of course. man. Fox Devil also eats it as, and gets like the story. He's like, hmm, you made me something interesting. Never human or dead. And then she just fucking dies. <laughs> Instantly dead. Yeah. Gets like sliced in half. Great. And this is also the guy in the OP uh, a whole bunch as well. Fun seeing him here. Now he's here. And, uh, yeah, this is, this should be fun for me, too, because I've forgotten almost everything about what happens in it. I remember it being really cool, but other than that, specific certain plot points, I'm going to wait to see and let's experience again just because it's been so long and so much shit has happened in the Chainsaw Man verse where it's like, ah, yes, I remember this part, but then in, like, t- ten chapters, some other stuff happens <laughs> that is, like, crazy, so... Yeah, well, it's funny because, you know, we were going through all this shit right now that's insane, and then, like, the very next arc, there's so much insane shit happening, you're like, oh my god, this is, like, a completely different series. Yeah, that's why I was just like, ah, yes, I remember. This is where the insane stuff starts, but it's, like, literally the tip of the iceberg. Uh-huh. <laughs> Things are only about to get way more cra- crazy. I was about to say Christmas. Oh, well, things are about to get a little bit more Christmas. <laughs> they are going to get a little Christmas, yeah. Uh, maybe. It's going to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> it is. All right, everyone. That's it for Shonen Archive. We thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, you can find Zen over on his channel where he does stuff as well. Zen, please take over. I'm so tired from work. I barely know how to function. Tell people what you do on your channel. <laughs> you can find me on my channel, probably in the description somewhere, I'm assuming. It's there. Uh... <laughs> where I host a weekly podcast along with my co-host Oceans called Shonen and Chill, where we review the weekly chapter releases in Shonen Jump. Wait, his name is Oceans? Oceans. I thought he was Oceanus. It's it's Oceans. Oh, fuck, I've been saying his name wrong the entire time. Oh, fuck, that's so fast. I've been calling him Oceanus this entire time. Nope, <laughs> it's oceans. Oh, oh fuck! Oh man, that's <laughs> go check them out, please. You can find <clears throat> you can find more Wokey content right here. I do FGO or Fago. Though funny enough, I also pronounce Fago wrong because it is actually legitimately FGO. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because it's it's an acronym. Yes, exactly. That that makes a lot of sense. I don't. I call it Fago. Uh, but I also do a lot of other video stuff. I play some Marvel Snap. I play some Yu-Gi-Oh! occasionally. I'm going to be doing a bunch of other games because I'm going to be crazy busy with work. So see a swamp of other games for a bit as I slowly die in the background. So that'll be fun. And we will see. Hopefully we're going to try next week. But we'll talk about it and we'll see. Hopefully we can get back to Gint- Gintama and... Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and everything else. One we need, of these fucking days. Yeah, we need to do it before award time. Our own special award time. And there's certain episodes that we need to talk about both both series. <laughs> in order to include them in the awards and stuff. So, yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>